Hi everyone. Today I'm bringing you the topic: how to keep your virtual currency exchange compliant with FATF rules. First, I would like to introduce myself. I'm Michael, the founder and CEO of Cubix since 2014, and I'm also the chairman of Smart Displayer, an IPO company in Taiwan. My background is from cyber banking security and smart card. We serve Visa and MasterCard certified products to over 50 banks in over 30 countries. In 2014, I realized there's a lot of missing puzzles in crypto industry. And we want to help crypto to go to the next level, to go mainstream. So we are trying to constantly solving the user experience issue, the convenience issue, security issue, and compliance issues. That's why I started the company. Last year, it was a fairly bad year for crypto. Uh, 1.7 billion US dollars worth of crypto was stolen, um, and a lot of hacks, scams, unregulated exchanges, wallets, and ICOs. A lot of those funds were funneled into bad actors through money launderers and to terrorism. Could it have been avoided? We're about to find out. This year, you'll be hearing more um, of these two key terms. One is FinCEN, another one is FATF. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with these two terms, I'll be explaining who they are later. These two guys, they are increasingly focusing on virtual assets, trying to close the AML loopholes and bringing traditional finance best practices into this industry. So, who is FinCEN? FinCEN is Financial Crime Enforcement Network, uh, US governmental bureau. They have a mission to combat financial crimes, money laundering, and terrorism financing. So they are there for a good reason. Without them, more funds are going to be injected into terrorism and result in more um, um, tragedies we don't want to see. In April this year, FinCEN already penalized the first individual exchanges, exchanger for not registering as a money service business. In May this year, FinCEN issued a new guidance called CVC guidance uh, it's called Convertible Virtual Currency Guidance that classifies all virtual asset uh, service providers from exchanges to custodial wallets um, as money service business. What that means is essentially exchanges are now traded as banks now. And another name, FATF. They are Financial Action Task Force. Uh, they are a sub-working group of uh, United Nations. They watch uh, the entire world's um, anti-money laundry and uh, CFT compliance practices. 22nd of June this year, uh, as our Congressman Jason Xu mentioned this morning, uh, FATF already issued a non-binding guidance that countries must implement within 12 months. So that's a huge impact uh, on this industry because all the FATF participant members, uh, countries will be required to implement AML regulation for crypto industry, whether uh, they, they like it or not. And this guidance officially adopts travel rule. So what travel rule is, I'll explain the following slide. Travel rule is not you know, holiday travel rule. Um, it's more on the money travel, the value of that travel. When FATF adopts travel rule, it basically means crypto exchange will now have to follow the banking standard in the AML practices. When an exchange is sending crypto to another exchange, now the exchange will be required to obtain, submit, and store what they call originator information and beneficiary information. In particular, those items, 
on the shugen. So it will include the um, customer name of the sender and the account number, uh, unique user identification that connects to either physical address, uh, ID number, or customer number. On the receiving side, the receiving entity must send uh, the beneficiary name and account number used in transaction to the originating VASP too. So, is that easy or is that difficult? In current crypto exchange practices, um, such mechanism didn't exist because at this point, all you need to do to uh, send a crypto to another exchange is to fill in the destination crypto address. And then you confirm. Then the crypto will be sent to uh, another exchange. There's something missing in the current mechanism that makes it difficult to share customer data between all VASPs. Because imagine yourself is an exchange um, operator and you have two million users and half of them use other exchanges. So you may, you may be end up dealing with another thousand uh, exchanges. And imagine if you were having to uh, deal with all the other thousand exchanges uh, it will probably cost you years to uh, establish uh, communication channels, building up trust and due diligence and so on and so forth. Another issue will be currently exchanges uh, cannot identify the ownership of originating or beneficiary wallet addresses. What that means is when your user enter a destination address, often you don't even know which exchange really own that address. So it makes it even more difficult to begin exchange customer data with another exchange. Let's take a look at what if um, we don't want to comply with the FATF regulation, what would happen? What would be the consequences? So for the countries that don't comply with FATF regulation, they will potentially be blacklisted or uh, be treated as a non-cooperative country or territory. For the exchanges that don't comply with those VATHA rules, what would happen uh, is either they get penalized, prosecuted, or shut down. As for the users who are using the non-compliant services, uh, they will be treated as a person that's non registering the money service business, which will end up being penalized too. So, what is expected? In each country, the government is expected to define uh, regulation for FATF rules in 12 months. And they have to ensure local uh, VASP compliance with FATA rules, ensure VASP manage, mitigate risks from uh, obfuscating tools like mixers. For exchanges, they are expected to comply with government authorities, share beneficiary and originator data with other exchanges, and be able to freeze and prohibit blacklisted transactions. Is that a bad thing? Sounds to me it's more like an opportunity because it's another step closer to mainstream adoption. And foreseeing this, once we clean the house, forcing out the bad actors, the mainstream financial institutions and governments will be more willing and more ready to embrace the virtual asset industry. Eventually, even banks will be offering crypto to its customers. And what day arrives, that's when we really can say, now that's mainstream adoption. So what would an ideal solution look like to address those requirements from FATF and US Treasury, FinCEN? Kubix started a solution with our Japanese partner, SBI Group, in 2018 and it's currently being piloted in Japan. Uh, 
by SBI Group. Let me introduce our partner, SBI uh, representative, Eileen, and let her introduce our collaboration. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. So, um, okay. Uh, let me just briefly introduce SBI. SBI is the largest fin uh, internet financial companies in Japan, and we have over 5 million users. And SBI Group as a whole, including financial service and also asset management, we have over 25 million users in Japan. And last year, we have launched our own cryptocurrency exchanges. And because we are coming from a traditional financial background, we want to do everything uh, um, as compliant as much as possible. So when we think about how we can do the deposit and withdrawal, we are thinking um, in the way that we can comply with SPARTAF and also the uh, Japan regulatory. So um, what we have to uh, think about how we're going to do this, we kind of uh, consider that if we can do a way that similar to a uh, debit card, for example, when you want to withdraw your money from your bank, so you got your debit card and you go to the ATM and you can withdraw your money. But one day, if you say lost your debit card, and what you can do is you call your bank and the bank will just reissue a card to you. So that's our idea. Um, what we do with KubiX is we're using KubiX card, we call it KubiX wallet to do our withdrawal. And let me uh, show you the way that we're doing this. So for example, if there is a client, he want to do a withdrawal from our cryptocurrency exchange to their uh, Huawei wallet, what they can do is first they came to us and they, they say they want to do a withdrawal. So they apply a card through our website and we will send this card via a post to the client's, of, uh, client's house and the client has to show their identification card in order to make sure that he is the right person, the right client to receive this hardware wallet. And once he has this hardware wallet, he has to register the card on our website again and then um, he can re request to have a withdrawal from the, their cryptocurrency account into the hardware wallet. By doing this, we will make sure that all the crypto asset that will only go into the whitelisted address so that we don't want all those crypto assets go into the, uh, for example, the criminal activities like uh, terrorism fundings, that kind of thing. So um, that's one of the main reasons why we think this is going to be the best solution. And another advantage that we think it's because, um, for example, if the client's account got hacked, so normally, you know, you can think about if you have a lot of bitcoins in your account and your account got hacked, the hacker will just easily get all your bitcoin out of the account, right? But in our case, because um, the all the crypto withdrawal will only go into your hardware wallet. In this case, even if your account got hacked, when the hacker wanna withdraw the cryptocurrency, say bitcoin, to uh, the address that you already registered in, with our cryptocurrency exchange, then you know the actual owner will get the Bitcoin on his wallet and the hacker will never get all those coins. So um, going forward, uh, since we, we know that FATF have already issued their latest recommendation on the travel loops and all other stuff, so we're gonna work with KubiX and now, they, Michael, to introduce you what we're going to work together to achieve this part of rules. Thank you, Yiling. So thank you for SBI uh, introducing our collaboration. It's essentially a KYC compliant wallet, uh, meaning we bundle user identity with a pair of private key and public key and uh, give a hardware wallet that's with the pre-generated keys to users' hand. So whenever uh, exchanges or governments want to make sure uh, they know who owns that specific address and the balance on the address. For FATF, what more do we need based on this KYC compliant product? So we think of two phases. First phase, we need a swift network for virtual asset. As I explained earlier, as an exchange, 
if we want you to be dealing with another thousand exchanges, it'll be devastating. So we all need a single communication channel for all VASPs to share with uh, another VASP uh, AML compliant data. In phase two, we need to implement KYC AML transaction screening on private wallets to ensure uh, even end users won't be sending huge amount of crypto to black markets or terrorism. Block the remaining loopholes. So the question is, how do we build a SWIFT for virtual asset? How can we set up VASP to VASP communication to promote compliance? Here's our idea. As a transaction data sharing interface, our product called Signa Bridge, that will facilitate safe, compliant, and communication between VASPs. Signa Bridge is an off blockchain of transaction information sharing messaging protocol agreed upon participant VASPs to share and conduct compliant messaging. And we have to keep in mind that privacy is fundamental because as an exchange, we all are responsible for protecting our user privacy. That sounds a little complicated, but in reality, it's actually a very simple and easy to use API, where Signal Bridge gives an API to an exchange. An exchange, when applying for a transaction, it simply fills in uh, the destination address and a counterparty code, like a Swift code, to identify which institution you are dealing with and submit the sender user information to the API. The receiving institution, upon verifying that yes, this destination address really belong to my exchange, and it is my Swift code that user enters, then the API will pass to the receiving individual uh, the sender information. So the receiving institution get to keep a copy of it for compliance purpose. In that concept, every exchange only needs to talk to deal with one single point of contact, that is Signal Bridge, without having to go through all the process, due diligence on uh, another thousand exchanges. The second phase will be Signa Key. It's an end to end compliance solution. It's, uh, the offering is separate from Signa Bridge. We are now offering compliance end to end using hardware platform. In this model, the compliance is guaranteed by uh, Signa itself as the VASP. you will look like the crypto version of ATM card, except we've turned the ATM uh, into your smartphone. In the fiat world, when you walk into a bank, open an account, a few days later, you'll be uh, given a credit card that's attached to your name. You don't even know, and you don't need to know what the private keys are, although they exist in your credit card chip. Same thing we are doing for Signa Key. After you receive uh, the Signa Key, after uh, your identity validation, every transaction you do with that key will be attached to your identity. And when you lose the card, just like when you lose the credit card, simply call up the service, prove your identity again, and then you'll be given a recovered key. You no longer have to worry about storing your own uh, recovery seed phrase or private key. That solves the uh, user experience hurdle we've had in this industry. So let me give you an example of a Signa transaction. It sounds complicated, but it's actually very simple. All you need to do is using the app to fill in uh, the transaction information and confirm it on the card and the card will pass that information to the phone 
which relate to uh, the signal directory, then relate to blockchain. All that can be done within seconds. It's faster than all of the current hardware wallets in the market. And it's compliant. So with this signal, we are making crypto like a bank, but it's for crypto. And the benefits for countries, it enforces FATF regulations, avoid blacklist and transactions, lead regulatory innovations, and attract VASPs as a safe haven, and track and deter bad actors operating in jurisdictions. And benefits for VASP, it complies with jurisdictional restrictions and integrate travel rule technology, enhance security, and more. So, in the next following weeks, we are launching the Signal Network uh, with a few top tier exchanges to do a showcase to FATF and regional regulators that this thing can solve the FATF requirement. We'll be launching that within a month, and I'm now welcoming exchanges to join us. Feel free to contact us at info at signal.io. Thank you very much.